Welcome, my name is Emily Seal. I teach both speech and theater at Motlow College, and um, I am so glad that you decided to take theater. I know you could have taken art or music, but theater is a really special art form. It's a combination of all of the arts, and I hope that you enjoy kind of being exposed to this if you're new and kind of visiting another art form that you love if you're not new to theater. So today I'd like to just kind of give you an overview of how I do things, kind of my procedures and what to expect for the class. And hopefully you won't want to drop it. <laughs> so, uh, so you have these weekly quizzes. They're only worth 10 points a piece and they're just kind of to make sure that you're keeping up with the class. Um, the quizzes, I don't actually tell you the answer to the question if you miss it. That's kind of a common question that I get. Can you tell me the answer if I did miss it? And it's just my way of kind of getting you to go back to the book and relearn the material if you did miss it. I want you to look it up and you to find it. It's also a way for me to kind of discourage people who are cheating. Unfortunately, with these online classes, we just have a lot of answer sharing. And um, this way, I'm kind of making you work for it. So... Every week, kind of basically every week, by midnight, 11.59 on Sunday night, I'll ask you to have completed that quiz. Now, this class is what's called asynchronous. So if you're feeling this big burst of energy at the beginning of the semester and you want to finish everything early, you're free to do that. By all means, jump in with the gust of a hound dog and get all of your quizzes done. Just want to make sure that by that final exam, you're, everything's still fresh in your mind. So those 12 quizzes, pay special attention to the wording of the quizzes and such because those are the same questions that will be on your final exam. So I would challenge you if, you if you do miss a question to go back and study. If you do badly on a quiz, remember they're only worth 10 points out of something like, oh, what, 600 points in the class. So um, they're just a learning tool. They are worth some points, but... Just make sure that you are exposed to the questions and understand what parts of the material are important and can study up for your final exam. So, discussion questions. So, this is my way of kind of encouraging you to talk to people in your class. So, for example, I may ask you, who's your favorite actress or actor? So, that would be a chance for you to express yourself and tell us who your favorite actor is, maybe post a picture of them. And then um, I'm gonna ask you after you post to go back and create responses to other people's posts. So say you say that your favorite person is Meryl Streep and someone else posts and says, my favorite is Johnny Depp. And then you might go back and reply, oh yeah, he was so good in Edward Scissorhand or something like that. Um, now don't get drawn into the sort of social way of it and get sloppy. With your grammar, this is not Facebook, this is not Twitter, so please use your academic spelling, your academic uh, wording. Please don't fall into um, how you would chat in a social media. This is still class. Think of it as how you would speak if you were in class. I do grade your participation grade partially on the way that you um, use your punctuation and grammar and spelling and things, so... That is something to pay special, special attention to. I'd also ask that your discussion question be something that you do after you read the chapter and have reflected on the content. Um, we're just going to have better discussions if you're reflecting after you kind of thought about the content. For example, you may be able to say, Johnny Depp is a good outside actor. He uses his facial expressions and his bodily expressions um, exceptionally well. Now that kind of outside actor jargon is something that you learned from the chapter. So if that makes sense, kind of incorporating what you're learning into the way that you speak in the discussion boards. So there are two papers. The first one is an actor paper. It's over Joe Turner's Come and Gone. So you'll pick one character from Joe Turner's Come and Gone and you will kind of tell me your psychoanalysis of them what you think their relationship with their parents were, is, what do other people say, what do they say about themselves, how do you think they dress, so that's your first paper, and uh, 
Your second paper is a live production critique. So you will go and see a live play and then write a paper about it. Now, in this class, I am happy to share that we have a play we're all going to go see together, which if you're not able to do that, then you'll need to go see a play on your own. But we'll talk about that in just a moment. So after you see the live production, you'll write a critique, just like maybe you've seen in the New York Times or in a newspaper telling me which actors were your favorite, what costumes or sets or lights or sound were particularly impressive, what parts about the play you didn't like. So we'll come back to that in just a moment. So um, this is an arts class and I am going to ask you to flex your creative muscle. You'll be sharing with the class a monologue that you write, you'll be sharing a poem that you write, um, and you'll be doing a costume rendering. Well, the costume rendering you'll just be sharing with me. You don't have to share that with each other. But uh, those creative elements are to help you to step into the shoes of the other artists. And honestly, I have a lot of students who, after these exercises, they have a new appreciation for August Wilson or uh, Julie Taymor, whatever professional artists we're studying, because it is a whole lot harder. Uh, art is kind of like the Olympics. You know, if you're watching an Olympic diver, you know, the first time you're just like, wow, how do they do that? And then after you watch a few dives, you say, oh, uh -uh, he didn't point his toes, you know, and it's, they make it look so easy that it's easy to criticize. So flexing your creative muscle can be fun. It can work a side of your brain that'll make you a better problem solver, make you a better thinker. Um, but it also may give you a new appreciation for professional artists and what they do. So that's kind of Part of my goal. But that costume rendering, uh, hopefully you won't have too many technical problems with that. If you have a scanner, you can just scan it in and email it to me. If you are at a satellite campus, the main campus, you can take it to the secretaries and uh, pretty much any secretary can email it to me through the copier uh, or a librarian. Um, so if you have any trouble with that, just get with me closer to the day and I will help you with the technical aspects of the design. The costume design. Another good thing about the costume rendering is you do get to trace the body form which is called a croquis so if part of it is your drawing skill that you're worried about don't worry you do get to trace. You don't have to draw uh, from your own but you don't have to trace if you're a particularly good artist and you want to draw that form for me I'd be happy for you too. And then the final exam. Now this is really important. The final exam needs to be proctored at a Motlow location. So now you can go to any Motlow location. You don't have to drive down to the main campus. If you're up in Smyrna or McMinnville, any location during the final exam week. Now you'll need to go to the Motlow website, go to A to Z, and go to testing services. Testing services, and that's where you will schedule your final exam. Now they don't have the dates up yet, but as soon as they do, I'll be posting that as a reminder in your daily news feed. Um, I guess I don't post to it daily, but in your news feed and giving you a little reminder to go ahead and sign up for time to take your final exam. Now that will be closed book. It will be proctored. So make sure that you're studying along the way so that when that final exam co comes and it's over all the things we've studied all semester, you're not overwhelmed by um, the thought of taking that final exam. So, uh, yeah, it's about 30 questions, by the way. So there's a copy of your book, Theater, Brief Version by Robert Cohen. So what's in a chapter module? That's just kind of how I describe your weekly assignments. So first, I'd ask you to read the chapter in the textbook. Yes, I do want you to read. Um, watch the video lecture. So just like this video where I'm lecturing and my voice is over it, all of your videos, all of your chapters will have that available. So then after you kind of looked at the stuff, kind of what I was saying before, then post on the discussion board your personal um, reflections. There'll always be a prompt there such as who's your favorite actor or if you could be a costume designer, a set designer, or an actor, which one would you be? Just kind of personal get-to-know-you questions. Right now there are um, regular get to know you questions, the inside the actor studio questions. So I'd ask you to go and fill that out. Um, 
what else, what else? In the discussion board, please use your best grammar. I feel like I've already said that, but it bears repeating. Part of your um, participation grade will be kind of how thoughtful your discussion board is and how well, how eloquent it is. So, like I said, there'll be kind of different activities such as writing a monologue or um, drawing something or, you know, something like that. So make sure you look for that every chapter. You won't have something every chapter, but. And then take the quiz. So make sure you've done all of that stuff before you take the quiz. And that is what's in a module. So like I was saying, one of the major assignments is that you go see a live production. So uh, for us, our student activity fees that you pay every semester can go towards the Tennessee Performing Arts Center. Lord willing, we will go as a class on November 8th at 2 p.m. Now I ask you to be there early, hopefully like 1.30, 1 1.45 at the latest. Um, that's how about 1.50 I'll walk upstairs and you won't get your ticket. So the tickets are paid for, but I do need you to get the transportation up to Nashville to the Tennessee Performing Arts Center. So Camelot, if you've never heard of that before, it's the King Arthur story. Uh, it is a musical and it is a love story of sorts. So I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a fantastic show. So if you have transportation problems or you, uh, get nervous driving in Nashville, I would highly recommend that you guys carpool together, um, find a way. If this date just completely will not work for you or you know you hate musicals or something of the like, uh, even if you don't think you like musicals, I would give Cam a lot of shot. But um, if you don't think this is going to work out for you, then you are responsible for buying your own ticket to see uh, something at a place like Boiler Room or uh, down in Huntsville at the Von Brun Civic Center. Uh, I am asking that it be a theater production, and if it is, if you're not gonna go with us, I do need to approve whatever you see. Can't go see a dance recital and call it a theater production. So anyway, I'm really looking forward to this. Please put it on your calendar, prioritize it, make sure you've got money for gas, all that sort of thing, because it's a major assignment in the course, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. You'll be there, and then also my other on-ground class at Smyrna will be there. Many times, um, other theater courses on campus will be going uh, to the same production. So if you have a friend in a different class, you may want to see if they have the same production that they're going to see. So anyway, put it on your calendar, Camelot. So I'm going to end it on kind of a discouraging note, but it bears saying because it's one of the biggest problems that I have with my online class please do not sit down and write an angry email to me. Um, I know that it's easier in an online environment when you don't have to see me face to face to say something ugly um, or to get your feelings hurt or, you know, to be confused by something. There's just kind of a block when you have to talk through a computer. And I would just ask you, please rethink before you send that email. Um, and before you post something on the discussion board that's ugly or mean, uh, you know, by all means, call me. Come set up an office appointment. If you, uh, you know, have fallen behind or if you're frustrated with the course, you know, just come to my office and we can talk about it. I will drive to McMinnville to meet with you and talk about it rather than getting an ugly email. Um, it is just unacceptable in the scholastic environment. And it's not the kind of work pattern that I want to set up for you for future engagements. So always be polite. Always give the benefit of the doubt to the people in your course. Please um, don't be disrespectful. You have the option of only replying to two different people's posts. So if something offends you or if someone says something that you don't like or you don't get along with somebody, you don't have to interact with them. So please don't fall into the realms of trolling the internet to say ugly things and take out your day on fellow classmates because it will definitely affect your participation grade in this course. And so please always be generous, be kind, be professional, and I promise to afford you the same respect. So 
Hope that didn't bring you down too bad. <laughs> Happy fall 2014. I am looking forward to this course and I hope you are. Feel free to come by my office and introduce yourself. I'll be at the Smyrna campus full time this semester, but I do have an office down at the main campus if you would like to meet up and share a cup of coffee and talk. I'd be happy to do that. So thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoy this semester.